I keep hearing women say, it was impossible to vet men. What if they switch up? 99% of the time, they're not switching up. They're showing you exactly who they are. So when you think about Offset, when you think about Yo Gotti, when you think about Diddy, when you think about Cam Newton, what did they switch up? 99% of the time, y'all are fully capable of vetting these men because the red flags are just right there in front of your face. You're just ignoring them. That is the issue. I had a woman in my in my comment section. She was like, oh, um, you know, men can change at any time you don't know if they're gonna lie how do you vet liars and I'm like girl men don't y'all are giving men too much credit they don't lie that well Cam Newton wasn't wasn't lying to Jazzy she knew the type of man that he was because she became the fourth baby mama so you didn't have to have a magic ball you, you didn't have to predict anything. You knew what kind of nigga that was. And you decided to become the fourth baby mama anyway. And so I really think that women, when we talk about this vetting conversation, especially, we're giving men too much credit and we're not giving ourselves enough credit. And I know that pe people try to weaponize the vetting conversation against the black women. I understand that, but you can still vet. I understand that the niggas be trying to say, oh, you should have chose better. I get it. I totally get it. And women are allowed to make mistakes. But at the end of the day, you can vet. And, you know, I think about just like me, for example, when first coming on YouTube and the people that I affiliated myself with on YouTube, when I look back at that, I think I'm like, dang, I ignored a lot of red flags. The red flags are always there. We just ignore them. I've done it. <laughs> but it's like, just because you ignore something, ignore a red flag, that doesn't mean that men and people can't be vetted. I have been speaking with women for over nine years now. And 99% of the time we ignore glaring red flags when dating men who showed us who they were from the beginning. Most men, most people are not good liars. Humans are creatures of habit. We're not good at hiding our true nature for long periods of time. There are experts on YouTube that provide information on how you can tell if somebody is lying. Their eye movements, their body language, how they move their hands. People just tend to look over and excuse poor qualities when we want a relationship to work. I agree that people can change over time, but that has nothing to do with the, the initial vetting process of screening someone, whether it be a man, a friend. And another thing, this is what I had to tell the lady in the comment section, vetting is not cut and dry. It can be repeated. You can vet more than once. There's no rule that says, oh, you can't vet somebody more than once. Yes, you can. At your job, do they sometimes not vet you more than once? Do you not have to do you know, I don't know, drug tests every couple of years, that's vetting. Just because you got to do it more than once or periodically doesn't mean that that initial vetting process did not work. You deserve that job. You got vetted for that job initially and they're going to have to vet you again to see, okay, are you still drug free? Let me test you. Let me do, give you a drug test again. That's vetting. The literal definition of vetting is to evaluate for the possible approval or acceptance. That's what the definition of vetting is. That is possible. That's possible all the time, whether a person changes or not. And just because, you know, we as women, we vet poorly, that doesn't mean we can change the meaning of words. That doesn't mean we can change the meaning of what vetting is. That doesn't mean we can minimize the effectiveness of vetting when it's done properly. The woman uh, in the in my comment section, she was like, oh, well, what, what if my man, you know, he started out being great and then all of a sudden he cheats on me. Does that mean I didn't vet properly? No, that just that does mean that he changed. That doesn't mean you, you didn't vet properly. But again, if somebody changes. You can vet them again. They can be evaluated again and then you can choose to stay or leave. That's what I think the misconception is. They think y'all think that once you vet once, if if he changes, then vetting is impossible. No, that just means he changed. That doesn't mean vetting is impossible. And then people will will try to like 
say that vetting doesn't work and then they'll say something else that means the same thing. It's just a different word. They'll be like, oh, well, I don't vet. I just have standards. <laughs> Ma'am, that's vetting. Like, <laughs> you're evaluating for possible approval or acceptance and then you're making a decision that is best for you. That's vetting. Standards are the criteria that you hold for somebody and vetting is the action of measuring someone against those criteria. If you do the latter in any scenario at any time with somebody, you're vetting that person. So let's call a thing a thing. That's vetting. Having standards and boundaries, that's vetting, babe. You can call it whatever you want, but over here, we're going to call it a thing a thing. That's vetting. Again, you're getting vetted at your job all the time. Jobs don't stop reevaluating their employees because the first vetting process was completed. It's just another vetting period. And that's the nature of vetting. It happens periodically. It happens in periods. Just because it's done more than once for various reasons, that doesn't mean it's impossible or, or it doesn't work. When y'all are saying these things, it's important that you, you're making sense. And so my point here is when it comes to hypergamy, when it comes to dating up, there is a vetting process in the beginning when you first meet somebody. And there's also a vetting process when or if a man changes. The two are not mutually exclusive. Just like they wouldn't be at a job that you were vetted to get and then vetted again to keep. So you can vet to get a man and you can vet to keep him. And yes, you can vet liars. <laughs> you sure can. And I just want to make this crystal clear, like, y'all are giving men too much credit. You're giving people too much credit. Most people are not good liars unless they're like sociopaths, unless they're fucking crazy and they're just super, super good liars. That's the only way, you know, you're just going to be blindsided and, oh my God, he started out this way and then, and then a year later, he just switched up. He just changed. Yeah, 99% of the time, that's not how it happens. That's not how it happens. <laughs> there was something that he showed you in the beginning, usually, that you could have clocked. And so I'm not saying, you know, there's not a small percentage of, of times where the, the man may start out one way and completely switch it up. But I'm just saying that usually that does not happen and the exceptions don't make the rule. So I just want, I want women to take their power back. And give yourself more credit. Listen to your intuition. Be able to see the red flags in front of you. Take off the rose-colored glasses. Stop thinking that, oh, it can never be my man. Because when you start thinking like that, that that's usually when you start ignoring the red flags. That's usually when you're like, you know, you're saying to yourself, basically you're saying that, oh, I can't believe my eyes, my own eyes. Even though your eyes are telling you that something is off. If you see that a man has all of these, he has 50, 11 children before you and he couldn't make it work with none of those women. You need to be thinking to yourself like, oh, he probably ain't gonna work out with me either. If I have his baby, he probably gonna leave me too. It's probably not gonna work out with me as well. That's how you need to be thinking. Stop thinking that you're special. 